So in Alzheimer's disease, it's not very well understood what exactly causes the disease. There are several different mechanisms, none of which are established. One mechanism that people are looking at very intently uh, has to do with the possibility of damage to membranes, hole formation in the membranes of neurons by so-called amyloid beta peptides. These peptides are actually found in, in all people, not just Alzheimer's patients, but it's believed that in Alzheimer's patients, some biologic biochemical processes get, let's say, out of balance and the peptide accumulates. It's not clear what that protein molecule, what damage it does, but one possibility would be that these protein molecules come together, form little rings if you want, and perforate the membrane, punch a hole into the membrane of neurons. And that then causes neuronal cell death and potentially the symptoms of Alzheimer's disease. We looked very carefully at which size aggregate punches holes into membranes. And what we found very clearly in a non-biased correlation analysis is that the very small species, so monomer, dimer, trimer, were actually protective, it seems. And the longest ones were somewhat protective. Not just that they didn't do anything, but they actually seemed to protect from pore formation and from toxicity. But it's the intermediate species that really seems to cause the, the problem. This is the indication we get. Too small isn't toxic. Too large is not toxic. It's just the right size. In this case, it's the inverse from the Goldilocks. The, the intermediate size would be just the right size, except it's the, it's the right size for toxicity. In this research, it's very important to consider what other possibilities are out there because Alzheimer's is so poorly understood at the present stage. And we're not saying we know for sure it's this mechanism, but at least our findings are consistent with what you would see in it. It could be a possible mechanism. What we would, of course, hope, all, I guess all of us in the field, would be that there's one predominant mechanism. Because once you know that, then you could really try and target that mechanism. If we know it, for example, it's pore formation, we could think about avoiding the formation of a pore, or we could think about clogging the pore, basically avoiding its toxicity. So once you know, it's much better. You can really think about what can we do now, now that we know this.